I'm Angela Nicholson and I'm joined today by Laura Panak, who is the winner of the portfolio category in the professional competition of the Sony World Photography Awards. Hi, Laura, congratulations on your award. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> Real pleasure to speak to you. Oh, Quite thank weird. you. It must be a really nice thing to have achieved something so significant at the end of what has been a really, really tough 12 months for photographers. Yeah, I mean, um, especially this year, it's been such a period of isolation um, that it's been a much needed boost. Um, so yeah, I think um, I think anything that kind of like gives us support and reminds us that we're not alone is definitely a good thing. So, and was that in your mind when you entered the competition? Um, to be honest, I entered the comp. I am quite sort of selective about which competitions I enter. Um, and the reason I entered the Sony one is because um, I, I respected the judges. I, I wanted to get my work in front of the judges. I also just see it as such a large competition. It's a bit, you know, kind of um, in, in terms of how many people enter and, and the exhibition and, and everything that comes with it. I just thought it's such a nice community to be part of. Um, and I always look forward to seeing everyone's work. It's, it's a nice kind of annual exhibition. Um, and if I'm being completely honest, I didn't really think about it sort of too much. <laughs> um, I think one thing that awards um, do for me is, is they encourage me to edit my work down um, and really consider my practice. And this year has definitely been a time for reflection on that. So um, perhaps that was also another reason as well. Have you entered the awards before or was this the first time you've entered? Yeah, I've entered once before um, and I think I, I got some kind of prize in, in a very sort of, oh, that was it. I, I won a prize in the advertising category and the fine art nudes or something like that. But we're talking many, many, many years ago. And then every year since, I've always just missed the deadline. I've always sort of put it in my diary and then completely forgotten. So I think this year I was like, right, I do this every year, um, just enter it, yeah. Just do it. Mm -hmm. And what made you choose the uh, portfolio category? Because that, that sounds to me like possibly the hardest category to go for. Yeah, um, I guess I'm, I'm kind of like, I've, I've spent a year just looking back through work, looking at projects, looking at my process. And also considering what ties my work together, what my interests are, um, where my eye and my mind is drawn to. So it was an opportunity for me to just sit down and kind of think through that and bring some images together. Um, I also felt it was the most kind of freeing category in a sense that it didn't have to have a particular theme. Um, and I normally enter a portrait sort of category or a social documentary category, um, but my work has kind of expanded in the last few years to become sort of also about kind of objects, stills, observations and landscapes. So I didn't really want to feel prohibited by that. Um, and I, I, I guess, yeah, it just felt quite instinctual. So you, did you select the images sort of after you decided to enter or did you shoot specifically with the awards in mind? No, I selected the images afterwards um, and they, you know, they're, they're very varied in the projects that are there. Um, and it, it's nice because you can kind of be a lot more selective about the images that you choose, whereas in a series, sometimes there's one or two that you don't really want to put in and you just kind of put them in anyway. Yeah. And how many images do you actually have to submit in the portfolio? It's 10. 10. OK, so I've seen I've seen three of them yeah. um, that Sony sent out and they are uh, they are quite different. I mean, two could be described as portraits. And then there's a third which is, looks like a, a sort of environmental landscape type image yeah yeah so i think within the images that i submitted i think about one third of them were probably landscapes and and kind of still lives but my work is predominantly based around portraiture so most of the images do feature people i mean there are there are definitely themes within all of my projects and i um, that was something that really kind of came to the surface when i was editing and going through everything um for example, all of my projects have some kind of nod to youth, age, time, identity. Um, a lot of my work is about kind of transitioning um, and um, yeah, and mostly just engaging with whatever I'm photographing in a very explorative way. I like, I like to consider things whilst I'm shooting, before I'm shooting them and then ponder on them afterwards as well. 
um, I think geography has the wonderful ability to kind of generate conversations. So um, I quite like going into wormholes. <laughs> and so was your entry for the portfolio, was that, say, from 10 different projects or were they from No, several? I think there were probably three or four different projects in there. Um, so, yeah, and one of them was based in the studio, which I thought would be important to kind of slip in because that's quite unusual for my work. So, again, it was nice to kind of um, enter work that was very varied in its approach. Um, no, no two, two projects that I've ever completed have ever followed a very kind of strategic method or way of shooting or producing or even kind of researching. It's all been very different. Okay. And what, what, what would you like to come out of this now that you've won a category? I mean, I don't have any expectations. <laughs> I'm just, I just feel very honoured and obviously quite surprised. Um, I think um, I think what's always nice is kind of um, it, you form connections. So I've had some lovely emails, and I don't mean sort of connections in the industry. I mean I got a lovely email from a seventy-year-old man the other day who, you know, just sent me the most heartfelt, wonderful email and just sort of said, "I've just come across your work," and and we just started this lovely conversation. So for me, it's kind of you know when your work is sort of out there in the yeah. you know in the world. Um, People get to access it that you wouldn't normally meet so um, it's those exchanges that I really enjoy and also for me it's been an opportunity to reflect on my practice and think okay well um, you know obviously I'm not satisfied with my work so what what can I do to kind of you know grow from this and and how can I kind of build my portfolio and and embark on projects that you know maybe I feel are missing certain elements. That's interesting that you say obviously you're not satisfied by your work what why why is it I, I don't I, I mean in the sense of kind of I don't think any artist really gets to the point of completion um you know um I, I think we all kind of uh, practice this craft because it's it, it's never ending it's all you know it's like an instrument you can always learn so um yeah I, I think taking a step back and actually looking at your work can be a great opportunity and um and also having other people look at your work I mean I kind of wish that there was also sort of you know what I quite like is sometimes when you enter an award and you don't get in you get some really constructive feedback and actually that can be so much more helpful than if you do win because then you know you're kind of like oh okay I need to do this um but I think um like I was saying earlier like um this year has been an isolated time and I think a lot of photographers that I've spoken to, including myself, have really lost faith in, in our work and um, my confidence has definitely dipped um, and, you know, just within my practice, I've definitely felt kind of this apprehension and this, um, yeah, like a bit of a block. So when you have that kind of, I don't know, just supportive hand of somebody kind of being like, just carry on, just you're OK to just carry on. Uh, it really helps. It really, really helps. Yeah, I think I think it is important to remember that everybody sort of has those sort of insecurities or negative feelings or, or, or moments of doubt. And sometimes, you know, like you say, trying to move forward and, and push yourself and do things like enter competitions can really help with that. Even if you're sort mm -hmm. of thinking, oh, I'm never going to win this, actually just taking part and you say getting some really constructive criticism is, is very helpful. Yeah, definitely. And I think the best awards, um, as well as kind of like highlighting effort and passion, they also kind of, you know, just kind of inspire, you know, even if it's just looking at work. And, you know, I have to be honest with you, competitions can be a bit of a lottery, you know, art is so subjective. Um, and that's what's wonderful about it. So whenever I enter an award, you know, I, I do feel like I'm literally just buying a lottery ticket sometimes. But as I said, that process, I think, is really important because it takes just a bit of kind of courage to, to just enter an award, you know, and it encourages you to look at your work, reflect on your practice, edit your work. And also it's an opportunity to go to a mentor or a friend and say, well, should I enter this or should I enter that and get their opinion on it as well? So I think it's um, it's, you know, one of those exercises that enforces camaraderie and brings us together and can also perhaps motivate us a little bit as well.
That's a really good point. And I, I guess, you know, you, you're talking about moving forward. Sometimes if you're looking through your portfolio, you're kind of looking back and it helps you to see how far you've come, I guess. Yeah. And also you notice the mistakes you've made. So you can kind of look at that work and go, if only I'd done that, if, you know, and and that's that's what it's there for. And and I think it's about unpicking your own work and, and kind of wondering why it doesn't kind of you know sit the way that you want it to sit or or what's missing and and also as I said just seeing other people's work you you know just I loved going through all, all the images that were entered you know just looking at the finalists and it's um it's wonderful to see such a breadth of work as well. So it sounds to me like the process of you entering the awards is actually more motivating really than actually winning one of the categories. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's really nice and kind of like it really helps. Um, but just like a grant application, just like anything, anything that kicks my ass into gear is usually, you know, kind of worth doing. Um, and, and then, you know, if you do, you know, the aim when you enter an award um, is not just to win a prize, it is to get that feedback. And that's why a lot of the awards that I do enter, I either really, you know, respect the judges and I, I want them to look at my work. And, you know, if I meet them in a year's time or, you know, whatever, at least then I'll be able to speak to them about my work and they can go, well, I did like it, but actually what I was looking for, for you know, and I, I like that. I like the idea of, of contests connecting people um, and and kind of you know forming those conversations that might necessarily not have arrived and that's i think even more important now than it seemed you know 12 months or two years ago being able to connect with people in that way well i think that but i think on a different level i think the consumption of imagery has become so saturated and and we are just so disposable in the way in which we view imagery and absorb imagery that, you know, I, I do begin to wonder if I look at too much imagery and I, I wish, you know, I, I wish to witness a parallel universe where I had never seen another photograph off um, because, you know, it does make you really in some ways in, in, a, in a helpful way consider your practice because you're like, actually, do I need to take this picture? Um, but in, in other ways, you do think, oh, it's just the same image, you know, I'm not doing anything new. So, um, yeah, I think um, I think with that kind of like oversaturation, overconsumption, it's quite nice to be able to kind of um, just enter into something considered, you know, and if you look at the results, there is so much variety in what is displayed. And um, I find that a lot more nourishing than just kind of flicking through pictures again, 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 again. Yeah. Now, as we, we touched on earlier, I mean, the, the Sony World Photography Awards is absolutely huge. There's a massive number of images get entered. And, you know, just getting onto the shortlist is a huge, huge achievement. Um, and I've been lucky enough to go to the awards um, evening a few times and it never fails to impress me and also inspire me when you see so much, like you said, very varied, but superb work. Some of it quite challenging. Some of it you don't necessarily get straight away or um, you don't fully understand it. And some of it is just it just blows your mind because it's so interesting or so beautiful. And then, of course, there's the um, exhibition usually at Somerset House which is always fantastic so many images to walk around i guess that's not happening this year is it i don't know i have to admit it's like the the kind of salt in the wound is just like you win and then you're like oh it's going to be a zoom <laughs> and and the the even you know the worst thing about it is like my dreaded nightmare where i get an email and they say can you record an acceptance speech you know when we tell you and it's like I, I can't think of anything worse. I, I procrastinated to the point where they literally emailed me about two minutes before the deadline and they were like, you haven't responded to any of, any of our emails. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't want to hold my screen in front of me and accept, you know, it's just awful. I mean, you know, it's obviously daunting doing it on stage, but it kind of just feels like a natural environment when you're standing in your bedroom and it's a bit weird. Um, so it's such a shame not to share that. And, and again, not to, you know, meet all the winners and meet all the judges and meet everyone involved. And, and you know, I've never been to the awards, but um, I know somebody that worked for them. And, you know, the production that goes into it is absolutely astounding. And as you said, Somerset House, what a venue, you can't really ask for more than that. 
Um, so it is such a shame and I, I have no idea if it will happen, but I'm sure next year, you know, we'll get an opportunity to see next year's winners. And, and I do think that will probably be there. Um, I really hope so anyway. Um, but you know what, like with, with everything that has been cancelled or postponed this year, it's still memorable. You know, I'm still going to remember doing that cringeworthy speech and, and it still means a huge, huge amount. Um, but like, like you said before, I think one thing that's really important is how subjective it is. And that's what I like about the exhibition is you can go around and you can overhear, you know, all these responses that may differ so greatly to your own. Um, and you get to kind of hear the interpretations of other people as well, which is really interesting for me. Yeah, and I always find it quite interesting as well that the different sizes and ways that different images are presented as well, mm. because, you know, you tend to, you know, you see a huge great image on one wall and then there'll be a small selection of very small images somewhere else and you find yourself sort of getting pulled in, whereas with the big ones you sort of, wow, it's, it's quite interesting. I think interesting. the presentation of work is so important and I think that it's something that, um, yeah, never, never ceases to kind of um, change my opinion of work in the sense that, you know, I've, I've witnessed images on screen and I haven't understand, I haven't understood in any way why people are just obsessed with them. And then I have picked up the book and I've looked at it and I've seen the print and I've gone, wow, okay, I get it. I really get it. Um, so for me, as somebody who's an analog photographer and who loves hand printing and, and that kind of process, I do feel very sad about that, that, um, yeah, that that's going to be lost. And is this it now for you and the, the Sony World Photography Awards or will you be entering in the future? No, I think it's really important, as I said, like for the process of kind of entering, but I think it's also good to have a reason. So um, for me, I wouldn't enter work into a competition unless I felt like it held some relevance. Um, and also I kind of, you know, it, when, I was when I was considering my entry, I was thinking about the themes that ran through my work and how it was quite relevant to this year as well. You know, this point of time and kind of instability and transition. Um, so I think if I enter again, it would have to be with a new body of work um, and it would have to be something that I would want feedback on um, and, and that I felt that could push me forward. Yeah, definitely. But I would, I would definitely encourage, you know, I. I, um, I mentor as well and I speak to a lot, I have a lot of friends that are photographers and we constantly kind of share, you know, competition lists and, and grants and things like that. And, you know, there are just certain kind of points that I guess always fall into the ones we enter, which is, you know, the judges always have to be kind of people that we respect. Um, the competition itself has to not be too expensive because I think then it's just completely inaccessible. Um, and lastly, kind of the, the exhibition or the prize or the formation of kind of how the work is put out has to be something enjoyable for everyone. Um, so I think it's, and then, you know, the bonus, the big one is, is when you can get that feedback, when you can get kind of, there are some competitions where you will get individual jury feedback, which is amazing. Um, unfortunately, I think with the Sony World Photography Awards, there's just too many entries for them to possibly email everyone back. But um, I do think that should be more commonplace in, in kind of prizes and competitions, because that's really why people are entering. They want to grow. They want to get feedback on their work. As a category winner, would you now feel that you could approach one of the or some of the judges and ask for some feedback? Absolutely. Yeah, I really do. Um, uh, they, they might not respond, but um, but but I feel that, you know, now that they've seen my work, you know, I would be able to kind of start a conversation with them. I would hope I'd be able to anyway. Yeah, I would expect that too. I mean, well, I, I think that they would respond positively as well. Yeah, I well, I mean, I think of it the other way around. I've judged awards as well. Um, and I remember judging the, the World Press Photo Award, and that's the biggest award I've ever judged. And I fought so hard for the winner in our category because I just loved her work. And I, and when I met her, I just, I, I loved her even more. I was like, wow, you're just an amazing woman. Um, so actually for me, I wanted to meet, you know, those, those participants. So I kind of hope it'll be the other way around. Yeah, I'm sorry. I think there's every chance that they will feel exactly the same way. And th there are probably far fewer people approach them than you might think. Yeah, yeah, I think some people um, don't really remember that people are people and and you can just say hello and yeah. they don't say hello back. It's fine. 
Well, Laura, it's been fantastic speaking with you. Thank you so much for spending Thank this time you. to explain all about the, uh, the process. And congratulations Thank again. Thank you so much. Thank you.